I work in um, the ward I work in is called acute leukemia bone marrow transplant so it's a section of hematology oncology so um, a lot of what physician assistants in the ward do we do a lot of supportive care for patients in hematology oncology so as the word suggests it's blood cancers so that's uh, people admitted with leukemias lymphomas um, and anyone usually requiring high dose chemotherapy that requires to be admitted into hospital and um, how do they orient a new hire to hemoc to yeah. hemoc service so fortunately, um, the service actually had uh, started out with uh, clinical assistants. So those are IMGs that uh, work similar, same job as what we do as a physician assistant. So they already had made a role for themselves and the ward was very aware of our role. So uh, initially they would be the ones to teach me the procedures that are required. So that's bone marrow biopsies, lumbar punctures with intrathecal chemotherapy, as well as skin biopsies. Uh, so that was a great way to just shadow and kind of see the management of things. But a lot of it was um, independent learning, especially because those uh, that specialty you don't learn in school. So if I saw a new case, I would spend that night reading the case, as well as all the chemotherapy drugs that were new. I would, uh, especially with my husband being a pharmacist and knowing the drugs, he assisted me in creating a list of all the side effects to watch out for and how to manage that on the ward. And um, are there other procedures that you do as well? Lumbar punctures, bone marrow, uh, bone marrow biopsies, and the skin biopsies. Sometimes we do help depending on the, um, the type of sample the patient needs. We do bone marrow harvest, so that's in the OR with the attending. Uh, do they teach you how to do that, or do you go to a workshop to get those competencies? So actually the uh, CAs and the other PA that works there taught me how to do it. So I would uh, watch, and then they would watch me. Like, see one, do one, or teach one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what does a typical day in the life of um, your workplace look like? Yeah, so uh, since there's five of us, we do have call shifts. So there's different shifts that are there. Uh, so there's one PA or CA that works in the evening. But in the day, uh, we do pre rounds So usually see our patients. We divide it amongst ourselves depending on who is there. And then during that time, we do the bone marrow biopsies that we need depending on the patient. Uh, around in the mid-morning, then the attending would come and we would do rounds. And that would include a lot of um, uh, health, allied health, including pharmacy, dietitian, social worker, and nursing. So we would do pretty intense rounds with each patient, going through what they need and coming up with a plan and any consults that we would need to call. Uh, and then afterwards, we would do any um, admissions. Usually they're planned if they're doing for transplant, but if they could be unplanned depending on different side effects that people are having outside of the ward. Uh, that could include um, things like febrile neutropenic episodes and uh, graft-versus-host disease kind of effects of patients post-transplant. And then in the afternoons is when we usually do our lumbar punctures with intrathecal chemo. Mm -hmm. And if there was a PA student interested in doing a rotation or preparing mm -hmm. for a job in hemo, now that you're in this field looking back, what would you recommend they use to prepare? Um, a lot of it has the basis of just basic internal medicine, so that would be good to have a good foothold on managing, managing a heart failure, pneumonias, uh, seeing arrhythmias like AFib, because a lot of the side effects are similar to what you would see. Uh, on top of that, there is a lot of extra layers that you need to learn, especially uh, chemo chemotherapy is one. And there's also a big social aspect to it as well, as caring for these patients is, is quite sensitive for them because they do get a, a diagnosis and require to be admitted and stay in hospital for months for a treatment usually. So um, there's a lot of learning. I would say the first thing to do is there's a website called Be The Match and it has a lot of just B BMT 101 and a lot of modules just to start out if you feel like you'd be interested in it. And um, what difference do you think the services have seen since adding PAs? Yeah, so uh, since I'm the fifth kind of extended or uh, what would I say, ex um, 
advanced practitioner on the ward. Uh, there was a lot already done when I was there, so it, it really enhances the communication aspect between uh, nursing if they need orders when the physician is not there, and if there's something that needs to be assessed, we're able to start things off, or even if need be, go transfer a patient to ICU if needed. Um, and it helps with the physician because the physician is able, it's able to reduce their workload in terms of call and seeing patients because they have their clinics as well that they do at the same time on the board. So it gives them time to, to spend more time on patients that require it. And do you have one supervising physician or do you work with the entire department and see everybody's patients? So at this point there are five that do the bone marrow transplant ward uh, at that and now they're actually extending our practice to do clinics for procedures. So we'll be working with more hematologists. And do you do anything outside of your clinical role as a PA? Yeah, so uh, currently I've been um, trying to do some networking with a group called CTTC. It's called uh, Cell Therapy Transplant Canada. And I'm trying to create an advanced practitioner group uh, to communicate different uh, styles of practice with nurse practitioners, clinical assistants, and physician assistants working in, working in bone marrow transplant across Canada. If there was a hospital or a department or a physician that's interested in working with the PA, um, what can they expect or what advice would you give them? The more you put into a PA, the more you teach them, the more you guide them, the more that the PA could give back. I find that if you lead them, then they'll able to gain their own confidence and be able to trust you. So it's a, it's a very, I find um, it's the relationship that builds the PA. Well, first figuring out what works for the PA in terms of learning, because some PAs like uh, getting homework or some like one-on-one -on -one teaching. Um, for me, I was lucky enough for my first uh, physician working in Steinbach. He was giving me one-on-one -on -one time with the different cases that we'd see and review it and that gave me the confidence to go for the next uh, case I would see to do the same thing. So um, I think when some a PA, a new grad, comes out, it's best to start off with that close contact and close uh, uh, lecture type style of learning and then just to continue to build that trust by giving them more uh, autonomy and um, uh, that communication starts to go two ways instead of just one. How do you keep up with CME or um, keeping on top of current knowledge in your area of uh, expertise? Mm -hmm. So in my area, there's a lot of new therapies that happen a lot. So there's a lot of new drugs that we don't even know what, what uh, their side effects are. So a lot of times it's spent using up to date. Uh, a lot of time there, we have CME lectures that they put on for us uh, through the CTTC, as well as um, there's a lot of uh, CME credits that are online through the states as well. Um, but a lot of it is just reading every day, especially if there's something new that happens. And if uh, I don't understand anything, asking the attending, because sometimes you just, you need to know when your limitations are and when you need to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And any conferences that you've been to? Yeah, so I've been to, um, two regarding my specialty, so that one is called ASBMT, and that one is through the States, and that was with nurse practitioners and physician assistants. With that, it was a lot of uh, ward management uh, lectures on patients receiving bone marrow transplants, what to expect, uh, long-term care, and it was a great way to see how people do it in different centers, especially with uh, nurse practitioners and PAs, and how they're just kind of intertwined together, so the roles are pretty much the same. Um, and then I did the CTTC just recently in Calgary, that and that's the Cell Therapy Transplant Canada. We just changed the name because of uh, there's this new therapy called CAR-T that we're going to start. So um, with that, uh, I was able to see all the different centers in Canada that do bone marrow transplant, and again, see the different types of uh, practitioners that work. So a lot of the times there are um, nurse practitioners. I think physician assistants are only in Manitoba at this point, but they do also work with uh, hospitalists, so that's physicians that work similar world to what we do. Mm -hmm. 
being a physician assistant is one of the best things that I've ever done. Uh, I feel like it is a great profession if you want to work in medicine, but also be able to work closely with patients, see patients, have time to see patients, and as well as have a good quality of life outside of, the, outside of work.